we're going to do is we're going to set this thing up just for an eight and a half by eleven, just a standard sheet of paper. Yeah, right? It'll make no difference. Whatever size you do, you're still going to need to do the same things. We're going to set up the feed system first. Then we'll move on to the register system. And all we're going to do on this is establish a paper path. We're not going to worry about any printing or anything, but the paper path, it needs to be established before you can, you can even advance on to printing. <clears throat> so on the back on the register table, we have a couple parts. You need to know about some parts. These are called table lifts. For an 8.5 by 11, you need to utilize two table lifts. You need a paper board. The paper board is going to keep your paper laying flat. And on your bail bar, and our book calls it a pile height adjuster, there's a scale on there. So you're going to visualize side to side. Your paper needs to be centered on your, on your um, register board or on your feed board. There's two side guides that are held in place by thumb screws. You're going to loosen the thumb screws and push in your side guides. Again, you're going to visually take reference if, if you're centered on your feed board. Once you're centered, you're going to just tighten up your thumb screws. Okay. Your papers should be able to move freely on that board. They shouldn't be clamped in there by your, your guides at all. And then your tail clamp guide, your tail guide needs to move up just to touch the edge of the paper. Okay. We need to adjust the pullout rollers so that way they're going to make contact with the paper. As you can see, your left pullout roller isn't touching the paper at all, so that does need to move over so that way it's entirely set onto the paper. Then we have our suction feet need to fit centered in between your double sheeter and your pullout rollers. So what we're going to do is just eyeball those where they need to be. And then lock them down with their screws. Now we need to move on and we're going to set the double sheeter. To set the double sheeter, you need to grab a sheet of paper off of your stack and just rip it down a narrow vertical strip of the paper and fold it in half. Fold it in a way that there's going to be about a two to three inch reveal where there's only one layer of paper out there. What we're going to do is we're going to try and send this sheet of paper underneath the double sheeter. So to do that, we're going to close up all the covers on the press, turn the press on. Now we're going to try and get the paper to go underneath the double sheeter. You can see now, as soon as the paper goes in, the deflector shield wants to, wants to kick up. That's going to indicate that your caliper is not wide enough on your double sheeter. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the double sheeter and raise the caliper up to accommodate one sheet of paper. Once it goes on to the second sheet of paper, your double sheeter should pop up. All right, and that would indicate that your double sheeter is set properly to accept one sheet of paper. Right? If it does pick up two, your deflector shield will lift up and send your paper down into the receiving tray underneath the press so that way you don't get paper into your water system, into your ink system, or other places that the paper shouldn't be. Okay. Now we're ready to move on to the register system. We have, we have tapes, skid wheels, and our, our jogger guide and our stationary guide. They're stationary, they could be a lay guide, or your jogger guide can be also called your push guide. Okay. What we want to do is we want to have tapes 
um, that will help support the edge of the paper. So you can see on either side we have two extra tapes that we can pull over to utilize them to help support that paper. To so move the tapes in, your press has to run. And there's a little handle underneath. Pull your tapes in. Now you're going to see that there's rollers up on this bar right up in here as well. That's going to help indicate whether it's going to fit inside the paper whip. So since we're running an eight and a half inch sheet, we're going to pull these into the eight inch mark. Then we can install the push and lay guides. Hello. Yo. Here's Maria Harvey. Yep. Can you have her come down to the nurse's office, please? All right. So we're going to pull the sheet in and set up the push and lay guides. As soon as the sheet comes into the register system, you want to stop the press, and you can walk it down by hand. Once the paper gets in between your push and lay guides, you're going to set your push guide so that way it's about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch off of the edge of the sheet and then tighten up the thumb screw. Once your push guide is set, you're going to move your paper forward until the stop fingers stop the forward motion of the paper. And at that point, you want to have your rear skid wheel set right on the edge of the paper. So we're going to slide that back just a little bit more so that way it's sitting right on the edge of the paper. Now you have a forward skid wheel that we're not going to need so what we're going to do is just push that up out of the way. If that remains down on the sheet as your sheet gets pushed your skid wheel is going to hold your paper back from getting the proper push that it needs. Once you have your skid wheels and your push guide set, you're going to set your lay guide. Your lay guide is going to get pushed into the paper so that way those springs are compressed uh, just a little bit, just slightly compressed. And then we're going to take the hold down tapes and move them over to the outermost uh, tape. Now we got the register system set up. We're going to move on forward to set up the delivery system. You're going to take that paper and walk it through until it comes out the back end of the press. All right, so you're going to see that your gripper bars when they line up vertically on your delivery part of the sheet, your side guides on the delivery are going to be in a full, and you can see that it dropped the paper. So I'm going to pull in a new sheet of paper. Once your gripper bars line up vertically, you'll see that the side guides are in their full push, push position and we can set those so that the paper will fall in between those. And then we have these paper strippers, which are nothing more than zip ties. We're going to set them up so that way the zip ties fall right between the paper in the gripper. Then you can see that if I let that gripper bar go, these zip ties are going to help peel the paper off of the gripper bar. Right, and once the paper drops, then we can set up the tail guide in the delivery. Okay, you can see that the tail guide's a little too far forward. Just pull that tail guide back. So we have established that the paper is going to fit in the delivery system. So we set up the register 
the, the feed, the register, and the delivery. Now at this point you just want to make sure that you're going to get a consistent flow of paper. So we're not even going to print anything. We're just going to get let the paper go from, from the feed to the delivery. If there's any problem at that point, we've got to make some, some adjustments in the back. the paper out there. So we'll make that adjustment to allow the paper to fall more freely. We run about 25 or so, so sheets. And the double sheets and skip sheets, and the miss feeds, now it's time to take care of that. Okay, you can see right now I'm, skip, I'm skipping sheets. That's because I wasn't in the automatic trace uh, option on the front. Well, again, we're going to try for 25 more, so it's not going to be successful. Now, once everything's set, your paper path's established. Now you can start loading plates. You get ink, water, all that stuff, you can start worrying about where your ink is going to hit the paper. But without the proper paper path, you're going to struggle. You guys good? Any questions? Can you ever go over anything new?